was younger, I read mostly young adult fantasy or romance, but as I've grown and matured, I think my reading tastes have diversified a little bit. One thing you'll notice coming up a lot in the list following are family sagas, which are basically books that follow multiple generations of the same or two or three families. I've also been trying to read more non-fiction, so you'll see some of that in today's video as well. So let's get started with some of the fiction books that I loved. First up, we have Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. Everything I Never Told You opens with the death of 16-year-old Lydia, who is the beloved middle child of Marilyn and James Lee. Marilyn and James are a mixed-race Caucasian Chinese couple um, who live in a small town in, in Ohio in the 70s and they have two other children as well. The story branches off in so many directions as you follow the lives of each of the characters before and after Lydia's death. It is extremely character-focused and it dives into all the secret fears, hopes, dreams, even traumas that each family member has and it shows us the consequences of all these things that are being kept secret. This book seems so simple and straightforward at the start in the first few chapters but as you read, the complexity just grows and grows. One thing that I love that Celeste Ong does is that she reveals the outcome at the start of the book but then over time, she weaves this artful story of each character and their relationships with each other and how it leads up to that outcome. And this is something that she does in another one of her books that I read and I also loved called Little Fires Everywhere. I think that book is also pop more popular than this book that she's written. But definitely recommend books, even though I didn't read that in 2021. Another thing that blows my mind is how good she is at just seamlessly alternating timelines between past and the present. Highly, highly recommend this book, along with her other book, Little Fires Everywhere. Next up, we have Ask Again Yes by Mary Beth Kean. Ask Again Yes is about two couples living as neighbours. The two men work as cops but the families never really hit off, particularly because one of the wives is quite cold. As the years go on, one child from each family grows really, really close to each other but something really tragic happens that puts their friendship and their love to the ultimate test in the decades that follow. I really like this book. It started out a little bit slow, um, but it was building up to that tragic incident which I totally didn't see coming and I was interested from that point on. This is not the easiest book to read. Just like everything I never told you, it deals with a lot of heavy topics like alcoholism, mental illness, parental abandonment and so on. But I think it does so in a very graceful and yet real way that humanizes the characters and gives them a lot of complexity. So I really recommend this book. Um, for anyone who's looking for a little bit of a more mature read, um, this is an example of a family saga and so it's also very character driven and not so plot driven. If you liked Celeste Ng's books, I would highly recommend this book as well. My third pick is Homegoing by Ya Gyasi. I remember seeing this book in my primary school library when I was 11 years old and I never really got past the first chapter because I didn't really know what was going on but I'm so glad that I picked this book up again 12 years later. This book has 4.5 stars on Goodreads and for good reason. It's a book that deals with history, colonialism and slavery in Ghana and America spanning over 250 years but it does so in such a creative way. Ongoing follows seven generations of two family lines. I told you I love my family sagas, right? So, And it's so interesting because every single chapter comes from the perspective of a new character. It starts out with two half-sisters, Essie and Ephia, and one family line leads to slavery in America, and the other family line stays mostly in Ghana. Each chapter was relatively short, and so it was really easy to get through, but at the same time, the characters were so well-developed. I'm really in awe of, of the author and how she did this. I think it's such an important and relevant book because it deals with so many important facets of history like the wars between the Ghanaian tribes and the British in the 1800s to the horrors of the transatlantic slave trade to the fear created because of the Fugitive Slave Act in America and so much more. 
I would highly recommend this uh, very poignant and important read I think um, and gives a really good glimpse into black history. Now we have The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. This book is about Ava Lavender who is a girl born with wings and also about her family who have a history of tragic love stories. This is another book spanning multiple generations, surprise surprise, but it focuses mainly on the woman in the family, so Ava Lavender, her mother, her grandmother and her great-grandmother. I actually hesitated picking up this book at first because it looks like a children's book but I'm glad I read it because I was quite pleasantly surprised. This book is exactly what it says it is. It's strange and it's beautiful. I thought the writing was very poetic and whimsical um, and some people might not like that but I really enjoyed that style of writing. It also falls in the genre of magical realism so the characters are really interesting and the setting also is magical in its own way. Like for example, I can remember one character who could predict the future um, based on scent. It was a very enjoyable book, I think partly because of that element that I could never guess what was going to happen next. Again, like previous books, I think it deals with very important themes and particularly for this book, it paralleled a lot of relationship problems that people face in the real world, like loveless marriages, like single parenting and also trigger warning, sexual abuse. So yeah, it, it does make you think, but at the same time, I think it deals with everything in a very unique um, and unpredictable way, which I found enjoyable. Next up, I have a book by Singaporean author Bali Kaur Jaswal called The Unlikely Adventures of the Shurgo Sisters. This book is such a fun read. It follows uh, three British-born Punjabi sisters who don't really get along but take a pilgrimage trip together to India to fulfill um, the last wishes of their dying mother. Along the way, they bicker, they learn about each other's secrets, and by the end of the book, they form an unbreakable bond. This book was funny and lighthearted, but at the same time, surprise, surprise, it dealt with important themes as well. Like figuring out one's cultural identity as a first generation um, Punjabi born abroad, and the very real challenges that women can face in a more patriarchal society. It's a wholesome story about family, sisterhood, self-discovery and forgiveness and there were a few plot turns that I wasn't expecting so that was also really quite interesting. Now let's move on to non-fiction. The first one is a really popular environmental book called Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. I love this book. This book follows Robin Wall Kimmerer's personal experiences as both a botanist, so a scientist, and an indigenous member of the citizen Potawatomi nation. She argues essentially through multiple vignettes that we need to cultivate a greater ecological consciousness and how we do this is by acknowledging and cherishing the reciprocal relationship that we have with the living world. Her writing is eloquent and poetic and her love for the land really comes through and all her stories are so fascinating and interesting. I especially love the way that Kimura brought both perspectives as a scientist and an indigenous person um, into the book to really discuss some of the shortfalls of um, the scientific approach. So for example, she says, my natural inclination was to see relationships, to seek the threads that connect the world, to join instead of divide. But science is rigorous in separating the observer from the observed, and the observed from the observer. There are a million more like noteworthy quotes in this book. I just think it's really eye-opening and definitely worth a read if you are someone who's even a little bit interested in the environment. I found this one by accident in the library and I'm really glad I picked it up. Nightmare Scenario, inside the Trump administration's response to the pandemic that changed history. Nightmare Scenario is a book written by two Washington Post journalists that accounts just how much the Trump administration really failed to prepare for and curb the pandemic. 
It talked about how Trump saw COVID-19 as a messaging problem and not a public health problem. So there were so many lies and misinformation just to secure votes for his re-election in 2020. It also really showed how toxic the work environment was in the White House at that time. There were so many petty rivalries and backstabbing within the Trump administration which prevented public health authorities and experts from really doing their best to prevent and reduce the number of casualties from the pandemic. I'm not good at reading nonfiction in general and especially not a book this thick. It was like 500 pages, but I read the entire thing and I think that really is a testament to how engaging and interesting this book was. Honestly, I think a big part of what kept me reading was just how shocked I was and how I just couldn't believe what I was reading. Like, it was crazy to read just how incompetent Trump was as a leader and how so many people in his administration just focused on what was best for their political survival instead of doing what was best for the country. Definitely recommend this book. It's so insightful and also so engaging and easy to read. It really flows just like a story. And we're ending off with a very light and fun read, Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat, Mastering the Elements of Good Cooking. This is a really cute little book. Um, it's a part cookbook, which is at the end of the book, and it's part manual, which teaches you how to cook better in general. It has a ton of illustrations and the prose is written in such a quirky and fun way. I also just personally loved hearing about Nostrad's story of becoming a chef. But I think the most valuable thing was learning how to cook better. The first four chapters, which is fat, salt, acid, heat, really gave me a lot of insight into things I didn't know about before. Like the different types of salt and what they're used for. Like the fact that you should never melt butter for baked goods and how important adding acid to your dish in its various forms really elevates the flavour of the dish. And also in case you're wondering, I'm vegan so it still provided value for me even though I don't eat meat. Even though there were a lot of parts that were not as relevant, it still was very interesting and insightful to read. So Fat Acid Heat was also adapted into a Netflix show, but I would say the book is quite different from a Netflix show. On Netflix, Nostrad travels the world, um, but this book is purely about the elements of good cooking, which is Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat, and I think it goes into much more detail about each of the elements than in the Netflix show. So those are all the books that I have for you guys today. Um, let me know if you enjoy book content because this is the first book video I'm doing but I personally love reading and I have many many more ideas for book videos in mind if you guys are interested. If you got to here, I'm wishing you a great reading year for 2022 and I'll see you guys again real soon. Bye!